Did you know the story of Jesus who loves you? Jesus who died for you? Jesus can save you. Did you know that he's the one son of the one God? Son of the living God, Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day, Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake, I want to live a life so I hear him say, well done my child, enter in. Well greetings everyone and welcome to the International Gospel Hour television broadcast. I'm Jeff Archie. It's so good to have you today. We're going to spend some time with our highlight segment, a very special one in just a moment. We're going to search the scriptures as we return to the prophecy of the Christ in Isaiah 53. And then we're going to take a look at a question that Peter asked in our Handling the Word of Truth segment, Lord, to whom shall we go? But first, let's go right into our highlight segment as today... We think of Abel in Hebrews 11 and verse 4, when the Bible says, By it he being dead, yet he speaks. When we look at that text, we think about Abel, and we think about his life of faith. Today we have one that although he's passed on from this life, he still speaks, and that is a former voice of International Gospel Hour, our Winford Claiborne. From 1995 to 2014, Brother Winford was our speaker on the International Gospel Hour radio broadcast. With our friends at Good News Today at the time, Brother Jim Dearman, now Mark Teske, our friends at Good News Today recorded some segments with Brother Winford that originally aired on the Good News Today broadcast. And our friends from Good News Today, well, they're allowing us to bring these segments back and to share them with you. Today, Brother Winford is going to take but a few moments and talk about the spiritual blessings that are in Christ that are in His church, which actually would be one of the same. And how thankful we are to bring back Brother Winford for these next few moments. After Brother Winford concludes, you'll hear our Daniel Howell tell you about our International Gospel Hour app. So from me, we'll go to Brother Winford, then to Daniel, then I'll be back with our Searching the Scripture segment. But for right now, here is our beloved and esteemed Winford Claiborne. <laughs> heard anyone say, the church is certainly a good institution, but it has nothing to do with salvation. One does not have to be a member of any church to go to heaven. Where in the Word of God does one find such an idea? Do you remember what Paul said to the elders of the church at Ephesus? Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Acts 20, 28. The Greek word rendered purchased means to reserve or to preserve for oneself. The noun form of the word means a people for God's own possession and is translated peculiar people in the King James Version, 1 Peter 2, 9. The church of our Lord was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. How can anyone ever say that people can go to heaven without being members of the church. The Apostle Peter wrote concerning members of the body of Christ, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, or a people for God's own possession. That should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. The book of Ephesians, more than any other New Testament epistle, emphasizes the absolute necessity of being a member of the body of Christ. Paul informs us that all spiritual blessings are in Christ. Ephesians 1, 3. To be in Christ means to be in the body of Christ, 
the church of the living God. Paul enumerates the spiritual blessings which are in Christ. Election, verse 4. Adoption, verse 5. Acceptance by the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 6. Redemption and forgiveness of sins, verse 7. Being gathered together in one spirit, verse 10. Inheritance, verse 11. Reconciliation, Ephesians 2, 16 and salvation, Ephesians 5, 25. If a man or a woman can be saved without being elected or adopted or redeemed or forgiven, then he can be saved outside the church. But no one can enjoy these spiritual blessings outside of Christ. Therefore, every person must be in the church of our Lord to go to heaven when he dies. Oddly enough, there are preachers and theologians who think the church was God's afterthought, His contingency plan. Those teachers claim that the kingdom of God is prophesied in the Old Testament, but did not materialize. Therefore, God had to develop another plan. The Apostle Paul literally destroys that position with these words, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hidden in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent or for the purpose that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians 3, 8 through 11. God knew men would sin and therefore developed a plan for saving man. That plan was in the mind of God from the beginning of the world. The church, dear friends, is not an afterthought. Paul also lets us be known just how vital the church is when he writes, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ throughout all ages without the world without end, Ephesians 3.21. How could anyone even infer that men can be saved outside the church of the living God, outside the family of God? If you are not in God's family, you need to be born of the water and of the Spirit, John 3.5. Thank you and may God bless you. Did you know almost half of the global population has a smartphone? At the touch of a finger, you can access the International Gospel Hour by downloading our app absolutely free. You'll have access to our website, social media, podcast option, our YouTube channel, and other resources all by the touch of your finger in the palm of your hand. Please download our app on your smartphone device today. It's absolutely free from International Gospel Hour. And now, friends, let's search the Scriptures. From time to time, as we pick up new viewers, we like to pause and say, what does this segment mean? Search the Scriptures is where we take a segment of the Scriptures and just look at them in an expository way. Over the past several broadcasts, we've been looking at Isaiah 53 and verse 12. And today we want to continue in our study of Isaiah 53. So let's do so by considering verse 12 by itself. Verse 12 reads, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Dear friends, let's notice this about our Lord Jesus Christ and the prophecy of Christ here in Isaiah 53. Now, as we noted before, He is great. Today, please notice with me, He is empty. Now, that, that's a stunner by itself. Wait a minute, He's great? Jesus Christ prophesied to be empty? Well, that's true, dear friends. Again, look at the section of text we're considering. 
because he poured out his soul unto death. Jesus poured out his soul or emptied himself to the very last soul. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus emptied himself. He shed all his blood. He gave his life. He died for you and for me. He poured out himself, if you would say, that we may be full. You know, thinking about being poured out. I'm going to go back in history. Actually, I didn't know this, and and I'm not advertising for the Sherwin-Williams Paint Company, but maybe you have seen their logo of the world and a paint bucket that paint is being poured over the earth. In other words, their product covers the globe. They are available everywhere. You know, that logo goes back into the late 1800s, and it's been modified through the years, but I find that amazing that there's not much change from that. But as they depicted that we cover the world with our paints, that you can find the Sherwin-Williams paint store about anywhere, we think about, in a spiritual sense, how Jesus poured himself out for the world. He poured himself out, emptied himself, and dear friends, he had to. In order for us to be full, Jesus emptied out himself. He's poured out to the very last soul. That motivates me, as I'm sure it does you, In Hebrews 12 and verse 2, to where we are looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus emptied himself. At the cross, he endured it. He emptied himself, despising the shame, the shame that was there. But Jesus emptied himself, poured himself out. And he is now sitting down at the right hand of the throne of God. Dear friends, from our study here in this text, as he poured out his soul unto death, as he poured out himself, we must fill ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. But first, we have to find ourselves empty. I love to study the Sermon on the Mount, what I call when Jesus sat down at nature's amphitheater and he taught and spoke a lesson that at the end in Matthew 7 and verse 28, the Bible says that when he had finished preaching, and I'm paraphrasing here roughly, When he finished the sayings in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Here's why. He taught as one having authority and not as the scribes. The message he brought forth impacted people. When he began in the section we call the Beatitudes, in Matthew 5 and verse 3, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In the study of the wonderful Beatitudes, the poor in spirit here are those that are empty or void of spirit. In other words, they need Christ to fill their lives. They have hit rock bottom. They know nowhere else to go. They are emptied out. Life has just stripped everything from them. And when they are empty or poor in spirit, Jesus gives hope. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, you need Christ to fill your life. That's the aim, the whole aim of the Beatitudes study, to take a person that is rock bottom, poor in spirit, emptied out, and how through Christ they are able to grow and to rebuild their lives. So friend, listen, if you're struggling, you think there is no hope, you're having a tough time, there is hope. You can make it. You can come back. If Christ can overcome death, through Him we can overcome the challenges we face. We put all this together, folks. He poured out that we may fill ourselves up with Christ. Oh, I love that. 
Let's encourage ourselves with that thought. Go into Acts 17 and verse 28 when Paul spoke of the God as they thought of him, the unknown God, but he said, let me tell you about the true God or the one you call the unknown God, for in him we live and move and have our being. God is still in control of this old earth, and God has made it possible for you and I to have salvation through Christ. From time to time, we sing that beautiful hymn, Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. That's taken from this verse, Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are potter and all we are the work of your hand. Oh my. He's writing there to rebellious Israel. He's letting them know in the latter part of that book that we will bring you back out of captivity. That's the warning in the first part of the book. And the plea is, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, you are the potter. And as the hymn continues, mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Dear friends, what a beautiful thought. Again, the Lord emptied himself, poured out himself, that we may be full. And to God be the glory. Let's pause here. We're going to go back to our Daniel Howell. Maybe you'd like to reach out to us here at International Gospel Hour. Take a visit to our website, and here's our Daniel Howell with the details. Our website is internationalgospelhour.com. That's internationalgospelhour.com. Please check it out and listen to our other broadcasts, learn more of our history, download our app, request our free newsletter, and free Bible study. Also, check out our free resources available from our fellow laborers in the gospel. Yes, friends, all for you through our website at internationalgospelhour.com. In our Handling the Word of Truth segment today, we want to consider a text from John 6 and verse 68 that simply reads, But Simon Peter answered him, that is the Christ, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. In John 6, verses 63 through 68, we find Jesus and his disciples, and yet there are some that are privately complaining or murmuring and there were some that did not believe, and yet some that did, and some departed Jesus. And when they did, Jesus asked the twelve disciples, Will you also go away? Then we see Simon Peter's answer. Through Christ and His Word, we are reminded there is life in Christ and His Word. This is the great declaration from Peter, Lord, to whom shall we go? So today we want to ask Peter's question in this Handling the Word of Truth segment, Lord, to whom shall we go? But specifically, to whom shall we go in times of trouble? Yes, dear friends, in this life we will have troubles. After all, in Job 14 and verse 1, man that is born of a woman, is a few days and full of trouble. Now, in a previous broadcast, friends, we discussed to whom shall we go when illness is diagnosed. Now, today, I wish not to put a damper on our study, but if you'll bear with me, we'll get somewhere good. What about when death arrives? When death arrives, to whom shall we go? Friends, you may be hurting right now. Dear man, you may have lost your wife, dear wife, a husband, maybe a child, a grown child, parent. Uh, folks, you're struggling now. Let, let's see if we can help. To whom shall we go when death arrives? You know, in Proverbs 15, 13, the Bible says, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. I know of no greater sorrow to the heart than to lose a loved one, whether suddenly or, or although rather they have suffered rather lengthy. 
Either way, such sorrow breaks the spirit and the heart as well. The scripture teaches us this is a path that we will all travel unless the Lord returns and time ends. In Hebrews 9, 27, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. But what about those of us that are left here to grieve? I mean, we see from the Scriptures Job suffering from the loss of ten children. We see the loss of David's children, where three died, and sadly one was also defiled. And you know, even Christ in the loss of John the Baptist, in Matthew 14, beginning with verse 1, Jesus suffered loss, and John was his cousin. But I think about Lazarus, of whom he would raise from the dead very quickly in John chapter 11, but yet we find the words of Jesus in John eleven thirty five 35, that he wept. He knew he was going to raise Lazarus, but he hurt watching others grieve and hurt. Dear friends, if you're grieving and you're hurting, we are not alone. And at times of death, yes, our spirits are broken and our lives are changed permanently. However, however, we can go on. And dear friend, we must. I recall the night after the burial of my father, or my daddy as I called him. You know, I awakened during the night with an unbelievable pain just above my stomach. But it wasn't a physical type pain. I arose from the bed and for a moment I literally had to stop and think about what to do and where to go. Being a warm summer night or during the night, I went outside. I looked up at the night sky and I asked, Lord, is this how grief feels? For a moment I became physically sick. It was just for a moment. But then, folks, it eased, and I did return to bed and went to sleep. A few days later, while in my study at my office where I was preaching, or as I like to call it, my war room, soldiers of the Christ developed strategies in the war room. While in my war room, folks, I had to stop and think about how to do things, going step by step in my mind, things that I had done for years. Now, do you know that feeling or, or anything close to it? Uh, you may be watching this and you're thinking, man, it's like you're reading my heart. Well, friend, I will tell you this. I made it through, had to work with it. Others have made it through. Dear friend, so can you. Now, I'm not going to try to make it look smooth. Let's think about the do's and the don'ts at times like this. Now, for this broadcast, time will only permit me to look at a couple of don'ts that we must avoid. We will look at our do list in our next broadcast. I do know two areas that we must be careful and to avoid this at all possible when death arrives. You may be in the middle of these. Here's the first one. Some blame God. In Job 2 and verse 9, Job's wife tells him, curse God and die. And it's easy for us to blame God when our loved ones are taken. However, we must realize that death entered into the world because of the sin of man. That's in Genesis 3. In Romans 5 and verse 12, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Dear friends, we are struggling with death because sin entered into the world. Now, I'm not going to blame God for that. But I tell you who I am going to blame. I'm going to lay the blame at the feet of the creator of sin, Satan himself, who deceived Eve, who in turn deceived Adam. 
It was man's choice to turn away from God for that moment and listen to Satan. Friends, don't blame God. God is there to help us. Don't blame God. Blame the one to whom sin came into the world. Blame Satan himself. Now, let's go after our enemy with God's help. Number two, others will stop living. You know, in the parable of the sower in Matthew 13, verse 21, think of those who were obedient and endured for a while, but in the time of tribulation or persecution or trouble, they fell away. Dear friends, this is a trial, this is a trouble. Sometimes you'll withdraw from friends and even family. Some will turn from God, cease attending worship, draw away from fellow Christians. But did you know, friends, that when we draw away like that, it actually delays healing and we forego strength that could be granted to us to help us get through it? Now, overcoming and dealing with these two areas early in your grief will go a long way to make each day bearable and allow your healing to be just a little more each day. Dear friends, don't blame God. Come to Him. We'll help you if we can. Don't pull away from those that will comfort and help. Draw nearer to them. Do we ever get over it? Meaning getting over the loss? Friends, if we get over the sadness, I'm afraid we would get over the happiness the loved one gave us. I personally hope I never get over the loss of my daddy, but I must grow from it, live with it, and move onward. And dear friends, I have slowly and carefully. It's better, yes, but it is different. But God provides the comfort needed through His Word and through others. When we are empty, only He can fill. God always has the comfort. When we hear the gospel of Christ, Romans 10, verse 17, we believe what we hear for it is of necessity, Hebrews 11, 6. We repent of our sins, confess Christ, we're baptized into Christ in order to be saved and added to the church. Dear friends, how beautiful that is. Maybe that's a good place to start. Back in a moment. The International Gospel Hour offers a free Bible study course by mail. Study at home and at your pace. Please call toll-free at 1-855-IGH-6988 and leave your name, address, and just say, Home Study. You may also go to our website at internationalgospelhour.com, click on the contact tab, and again, leave your name, address, and type home study. We'll send it right away. Dear friends, God poured out the Christ so that we may be full, and He's the one to whom shall we go. Thanks for joining me today, and until next time, keep watching. Son of the one God, Son of the living God, Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day, Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake, I want to live a life so I hear him say, well done my child, enter in.